The tactus venosus is a short vessel connecting the umbilical vein to the inferior vena cava. The ductus plays a critical role in preferentially shunting oxygenated blood to the fetal brain. About 80% of oxygenated blood from the placenta bypasses the liver and is directed through the ductus venosus to the heart. It enters the right atrium and then the left atrium through the foramen ovale. From the left atrium, the blood passes into the left ventricle and then the aorta. The ductus venosus usually closes within a few minutes after birth, but this may take longer in preterm neonates. In the assessment of ductus venosus flow, it is important that the following criteria are observed. The gestation should be 11 to 13 weeks and 6 days, and the fetal crown ramp length should be between 45 and 84 millimeters. The fetus should not be moving. The magnification of the image should be such that the fetal thorax and abdomen occupy the whole screen. A right ventral mid-sagittal view of the fetal trunk should be obtained. Color flow mapping should be used to demonstrate the umbilical vein, ductus venosus and fetal heart. The pulse Doppler sample should be small, between 0.5 and 1 mm, so that we can avoid contamination from the adjacent veins and it should be placed in the yellowish aliasing area. The insonation angle should be less than 30 degrees to the vessel. The filter should be set at a low frequency between 50 and 70 Hz to allow visualization of the whole waveform. The sweep speed should be high, between 2 and 3 cm per second, so that the waveforms are widely spread for better assessment of the A wave. Blood flow in the ductus has a characteristic waveform with high velocity during ventricular systole, the S wave, and diastole, the D wave. There is also forward flow during atrial contraction, the A wave. In screening for chromosomal abnormalities, qualitative assessment of the ductus venosus blood flow is based on the appearance of the A wave, which is classified as normal if the A wave is positive or absent, and abnormal if the A wave is reversed. The waveform from the ductus venosus is contaminated from the adjacent veins if the pulsed wave Doppler sample is large, more than one millimeter, or if it is not placed exactly on the ductus venosus. At 11 to 13 weeks, reversed A wave in the ductus venosus is found in about 3% of euploid fetuses, in 65% of fetuses with trisomy 21, and in 55% of fetuses with trisomy 18 and those with trisomy 13. Reversed A wave is more common if the gestation is 11 than 13 weeks, the fetal nuchal translucency is high, the maternal serum papae is low, and the mother is black. Reversed A wave is associated with increased risk for chromosomal abnormalities, cardiac defects, and fetal death. However, in about 80% of cases with reversed A wave, the pregnancy outcome is normal. There are two strategies for assessment of ductus venosus flow in screening for trisomy 21 with similar detection and false positive rates. In the first strategy, 
Tactus venosus flow is examined in all cases with the advantage of not only improving the performance of screening for chromosomal abnormalities, but also identifying pregnancies at increased risk of cardiac defects and fetal death. In the second strategy, tactus venosus flow is examined only in the subgroup of pregnancies with an intermediate risk after combined fetal and T, FHR, free beta HCG, and PABE screening. Assessment of ductus venosus flow improves the performance of combined screening with a detection rate increasing from 90 to 95% and the false positive rate decreasing from 3 to 2.5%. There is an association between reversed A wave in the ductus venosus and fetal cardiac defects. The prevalence of major cardiac defects in euploid fetuses is about 4 in 1000. The risk for major cardiac defects increases with increasing fetal nuchal translucency thickness as shown in the graph on the left. In fetuses with increased nuchal translucency, the risk for major cardiac defects is modified by the findings in the ductus venosus. The risk is increased if the ductus A wave is reversed and the risk is decreased if the ductus A wave is normal. If the ductus venosus A wave is reversed, it is therefore important that detailed ultrasound examinations are carried out to exclude or diagnose major cardiac defects. There is an association between reverse flow in the ductus venosus and subsequent miscarriage or fetal death. The risk of miscarriage or fetal death between 11 weeks and delivery is about 2%. The prevalence of reverse A wave at 11 to 13 weeks is more than 10% in pregnancies resulting in fetal death and less than 4% in those resulting in live birth. The risk of fetal death is increased if the ductus venosus A wave is reversed, the maternal serum PABE is low, the mother is black, or the mother is obese. If the ductus venosus A wave is reversed, it is important to carry out serial ultrasound scans to monitor fetal growth and also to Doppler studies of the uterine artery and the fetal circulation.